all of a sudden I felt shy. <laughs> I felt like I was being watched. Welcome back to my channel. Unless you're new here, and just welcome. My name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about my favorite movies, mostly horror, and my favorite music, mostly metal. And we are going to finish up the Rambo franchise thus far. Death thus far. And anyway, yeah, we're going to do that. And um, we are going to finish it up with Rambo for, uh, Last Blood. <laughs> Rambo Last Blood. What the hell is wrong with me? I don't know. I just, like, when I hit play, I just got the giggles and I, I felt all like I was just stepping out of Porky's, the movie, you know? I, I don't know. Anyway, Rambo, First Blood, we are going to finish up the franchise. This is the five film collection, the newest one, um, all remastered on Blu-ray. Very, very nice. And yes, Rambo, Last Blood was released in 2019, and it was directed by Adrian Grunberg, written by Matthew Cyrillink and Sylvester Stallone and Dan Gordon. So that guy who helped write the first four wasn't there. I hope he's not dead or nothing. But it stars Sylvester Stallone, Paz Vega, and Sergio Paris Mancheta. Yes, it is. And it was released in 2019, like I said. In which Rambo, that would have made Rambo 73 years old. Because he's 77 right now. Because I looked it up afterwards, like, you know, I just watched it again, like, a while ago, like an hour and a half ago. And I was like, how old is that motherfucker? And it was like, I looked, I hit Google, I put in Sylvester Stallone, and there it was, it said 77, and I was like, shit. So if he's 77, that means he was like, what, 72, 73, when he made this movie? I'm like, fuck. Yeah. He can still move, though, can't he? So anyway, uh, it is 11 years after the Burma incident of Rambo 4. Sorry about that. 4. Not Rambo. It's Rambo 4, goddammit. And it's Scream 5. That's just the way it is. So this is 11 years after the Burma incident of Rambo 4. And he has been living quietly with his family friend, Maria, who's sort of like his housekeeper friend. And he has helped raise her her granddaughter, Gabriella. So he's been at home, you know, and he, he takes meds uh, probably for PTSD and stuff. Um, and he raises his horses and his horse ranch, trains them, stuff like that. So we get to see a lot of that. We also get to see him. He's like built this massive underground labyrinth, like a catacombs underneath his ranch, which I thought was quite stunning. Talk about a survivalist. I would not. I would not mind having one of those. You know, because it, it was fucking cool. <laughs> Provided you didn't get lost in it and starve to death. But um, so he's got this underground tunnel system, which was which was very cool. Um, He really feels like this Gabriella. She calls him Uncle John, you know. So he really has been her father figure uh, for these 11 years. And she brings, he, he allows her to bring her friends for a party in the catacombs, you know. So they all thought that was pretty cool. Afterwards, she ends up telling him that she has a friend, Gazella, which her mother, her grandmother does not like, Gisela, Gazella. She's more like Godzilla, the fucking bitch, but um, Gazelle, you know, um, had told her that she had located her father who had abandoned them 11 years ago. Her mother had died of cancer, and her father had then abandoned her, and that's why her grandmother is raising her. So, they tell her, 
well, the, you know, no, her, her grandmother gets really upset. You know, you shouldn't go nowhere near that. But she wants to go to Mexico. And they're like, no, you will not. She's like, okay, I will not. Then she turns right around and goes, yes, I will. And she goes down there behind their back. She meets up with Gazelle. Giselle. <laughs> she meets up with the bitch who like um and and I don't you know I don't know if the girl like and I don't think she intended at the first to like betray Gabrielle but you know Gabrielle went and saw her father and that was like a really ugly scene because the father was like what are you doing here you know and then she like kept pushing him which you know he did give her a couple of hints that Maybe you should just let it slide. I'm glad to see you, but bye. But no, I really want to know why you did what you did. Well, I'll be damned if he don't tell her. You know, I realized I never liked her and didn't care, give, uh, care anything about her, her, the mother, or you, to be honest. And then she turned around and died of cancer and left me with you. And there you go. You asked for it. And I'm like, what a dick. You know, like that was, that was, that was wrong. I guess, you know, only props you could give him was being honest, but that doesn't mean you're not an asshole, you know. So that upsets her and the girl, Gazelle, or did I write that somewhere? What is that fucking bitch's name? Giselle. Um, yeah, Giselle, G-I-Z-E-L-L-E. Giselle. So she's like, no, 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 you're too upset. You can't drive back to the States. You know, come and let's go out to a bar. So they, she takes her out to the club where she gets separated from her, supposedly. And um, Gabrielle is gone. Now, like I said, I don't think she intentionally got her trafficked. I don't think that's what she was doing. I think she just saw her disappear. And now she knew it was like, fuck so she ends up calling them rambo and maria and telling them that gabrielle is missing that she is gone so he of course he runs down there and goes uh to find out so he goes and he like tells manuel what he thinks of him but he didn't have nothing to do with it um and then he goes and he like nearly he he, he scares the shit out of that gazelle girl and it's like, you will take me to the club. You will show me the guy that she was talking to. And, um, or I will kill you. And he was serious. So she does that and tells him, points him out. He then, and there's this other lady that's like watching the guy and watching Rambo watch the guy, right? We later find out that's Carmen. So she goes down there and, um, or he goes down there and this is occurring. She watches him. He keeps his eye on that guy. When that guy leaves, he leaves and that Carmen follows. So he then gets really nasty, stabs him in the thigh, and he actually physically with his fingers puts his hand in there. It's like that scene I forgot to mention in Rambo 4 when he with his bare hand ripped that guy's throat out. That was fucking spectacular. But in this one, he like sticks his fingers in and gets his collarbone and pulls it out and breaks it. And it's like, well, the, uh, you know, that's that's talk about coercion. But so he managed to get that guy to tell him where Gabrielle is. Gabrielle, you know, and he takes him to that place. But he knows the layout and Rambo doesn't. So he knows that Rambo's going to be spotted. And he is. And he has absolutely beat the shit out of. He is ambushed, beaten mercilessly, and marked by the cartel with this big, giant cuts across his face, which looked very, very painful. <laughs> you know, um, great practical effects going on here. You know, so... They let him, they leave him, one of the brothers wants him dead, but the other one does not. He wants, you know, make an example of my power. So he leaves him alive, and Carmen, Carmen has been watching this, so she goes when everybody's cleared out. She goes and helps him, takes him back to her place, 
where he finally comes to like four and a half days later, like, what's up? Why am I here? Who are you? She explains that she is an investigative reporter who has been watching that guy because they did this same thing to her sister three years earlier. So, um, he convinces her to tell him using her knowledge about this cartel where they are you know and stuff like that he ends up going to one of their houses as in whorehouse where this girl is being like jacked full of heroin and trafficked on a daily basis and he kills everybody in there but her he doesn't kill the, the hookers the girls but he does kill all of the guys that were guarding it and the Johns. And he gets Gabrielle. And on the way back, it was a very, very sad scene. Because on the way back, you know, he's so glad that he rescued her. And he's talking about why he did it. That how much she meant to him. How much like a daughter she was. That she had given him purpose in raising her had given him purpose over these last 11 years that, um, you know, how thankful he was for her, upon which she died right there because they had her pumped so full of heroin that, you know, she died right there in the truck. So he has to show up, has to tell Maria, very, very sad, and then he's, you know, sends Maria away. He's like, there's nothing for me here. You know, he doesn't tell her what he's going to do. But he sends her away. And, you know, after they bury Gabrielle. And then he goes back to Mexico where he finds Carmen. And he's like, you know, she's like, what the fuck are you doing back here? And he's like, you know, Sicario. <laughs> it's payback time. So. He convinces her to help him. Where does he need to go? She eventually breaks down and, and says, okay, I'll show you, you know, where their hideout is. He goes there and it is absolutely bloody gore-fantastic, you know, bloody gore-fantastic, you know. I mean, he kills them all in such fantastically unique and wonderful ways very very brutal i loved it <laughs> you know i like loved it completely so um he does manage to kill all of them now he had rigged that entire ranch right because he knew what he wanted was was big vengeance you know what i mean so he ends up beheading victor which is one of the brothers leaving only hugo so he knows Hugo's coming after them, and of course they do. And he has got that place rigged up so fantastically. You know, they do show up, and we have this big, gigantic final showdown. I have never seen so many fantastically cool kills, and it's almost like every damn one of them was individual, you know, unique. Like, not only did you see 125 kills in this movie, but you saw 125 unique kills. Like he did each one differently. Which was like, I didn't know there was that many ways to die. <laughs> you know. But he managed to find like every way imaginable to kill a person. So it was, it was like unique just watching it. You know, I'm like, this is a very unique movie. In that it's not like one person stabbing to death some, you know, 100 people. It's like one person... Stabbing, shooting, crunching, staking, trapping, doing this. It was it was absolutely fantastic. Some absolutely wonderful gory kills, um, especially down in the tunnel. All of those traps were just genius, you know. And then after he had killed everybody, he did leave Hugo for the last. And our man Rambo... A lot of people with their vengeance, people like to talk shit, you know, you know, I'm going to do this to you one day. I'm going to do that to you one day. When Rambo says it, he fucking means it. That's what I tell you people out there. Don't run your mouth unless you're really going to follow through, you know, 
And Rambo definitely follows through. Because <laughs> he told that guy, I'm going to cut your heart out in front of you. Like you've cut mine out by killing Gabrielle. And that's exactly what he did. When he nailed him to the door, he nailed him like in four shoulder, shoulder, thigh, thigh. He nailed him to the wall with those arrows. And then he walked up to him. And he took out that big knife. And while he's alive, he cut his sternum open and reached in and grabbed his heart and pulled it out. Like for a millisecond, the guy was looking at it, you know. So that I thought was absolutely fantastic. And then he went to the front porch and he mused about things. You know, he went to the front uh to the front porch and vowed to continue fighting for good and uh, keeping the memories of his dead loved ones alive. Then we get the credits, which was a montage of scenes from all of the previous Rambo films. And then we see him pull a Clint Eastwood and a fistful of dollars or something, and he saddles up the horse and he rides off into the sunset. And I was very, very pleased. You know, this movie's like a 9.6. I like it a little bit better than Rambo 4. Um, but really, when you're talking 9.4s and 9.5s and 9.6s, you know, there's not a lot of difference there. Uh, even with 9, you know, 9.4 compared to 10 out of 10. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just something. We collectors. We like to get, you know, that's why I ain't doing no five-star scale. <laughs> you know, it doesn't give me enough room, okay? I need 10, 10.1. <laughs> so, like, well, that movie was a 6.6. .6. Like, well, what's the difference between a 6 and a 7 and a 6? What, what is it? I'm a collector. I'm a film buff. Believe me, there's a difference. So... Other than seeing, you know, our heroes grow old, which is always a sad thing to do, you know, I think what Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton, she's got like, she's had this saying, wasn't it in Still Magnolias? I think it was in Still Magnolias, but she said it in interviews too, because I've heard her and she said that, you know, there's, there's just one fact you can't escape and that is time marches on. And unfortunately for you, when you realize that time marches on, it's usually marching across your face. And that is so true. So, you know, it is, it is kind of sad to see our heroes, if they are heroes, if they happen to be an icon of yours, to see them, well, it's like, you know, Tom Cruise going from risky business to this last Mission Impossible. But he still got it. I mean, you know, but he's not going to have it. You know, is he going to have it when he's 77? You know, when is it going to start showing? You can see a difference in Tom Cruise now as opposed to 1985. Uh, you can see a difference, but it's not, it's not as pronounced. But, you know, because he's still pretty young. But you have to think about it, you know. Tom Cruise is what, 60? 60, 61, 60, or 61? And you know who else is approaching 60? Brad Pitt. He's like what, 59? 58, 59? He's like 59 or something. Keanu Reeves, 58, 59. John Cusack. All of them. They're all. It's sad. Sometimes I hate seeing it. You know, and there were parts in this movie, in Rambo Last Blood, where I was distracted. You know, a side view of Stallone or a close up or something like that, and you're like, God damn, fuck, we're all so old now. <laughs> you know, so that can be that can be distracting, and I admit that there was a couple of times I was distracted by how old. Hey, look, because, you know, 
I've watched these five movies all within the last week, you know? So, to see First Blood and then Last Blood, there's a big difference in his appearance. <laughs> so, but the movie itself was fantastic. The The kills were absolutely glorious. I mean, he makes up for it in every other way. And he's still tough as nails, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's like I said, 9.6 out of 10. And what would be the knockoff, those little miniature knockoffs? I don't know. We give it what we feel, and I feel 9.6, so it's obviously something I'm not even aware of, but I just feel 9.6 out of 10. So just round it up if you're upset. <laughs> but that was Rambo. Last Blood. I absolutely love this movie. I love this franchise. I talked a little bit about how it feels like um, Prime Suspect to me. It feels like other franchises in which you have the main person evolve with the character as well. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. Do I want another Rambo? I mean, I don't know. What do you people want him doing? Shooting Tommy guns in a wheelchair? You know, that thing, I mean, I'm glad I didn't like that Rocky. I've never liked Rocky. You know, that's, I, I'm not a fan of that part of his career. I like his action. You know, I like his action thrillers and slashers and stuff. But um, what they had to continue that franchise with, with what, like the, the name of that rock band, Creed or whatever it is. Of course, I've never seen any of that shit and know what I want to. But, um, you know, I mean, what do you want to do? Have some way to make a new Rambo, you know? I thought I saw an international movie database. They had, like, there was something called Rambo, and I was like, did somebody try to remake Rambo? Are you kidding me? You can't do that. I don't know. I guess they could reboot it for the, for a new generation, but you're never going to... I don't think most people would, like, appreciate that. And I don't know if there's a way for him to hand off the torch. You know, he's an ex Green Beret Vietnam vet. How do, how do, how do, what, what do you what do you replace that with? You know, how do you hand that torch to somebody new from what? So I, I don't know. I, I just I think it's in my opinion, I think it's concluded and I think it's concluded very, very appropriately. I really don't want another Rambo movie because I don't understand what they would do. To try to do it. So unless it's something that I can't think of. I'm I'm fine with this. It is absolutely fantastic. Like I said before. The Rambo franchise is one of my top five franchises of all time. Across all genres. I am a complete and total Rambo freakazoid. So let me miss you by. Always remember and never forget. You are a very, very special person. Tell me any thoughts you may have on the Rambo franchise in the comments below and I will see you in the next thing I do always remember never forget you're a very very special person and DNA proves it bye